I want to answer this question, deal with this issue. Who is the church for? Do we think the church is for the unbeliever or is the church for the believer? Well, it can't be just for the unbeliever only. Who would answer that question? But is it for the believer only or is it for the believer as well as the unbeliever? Who is the church for? And again, we have this issue because there are people who do goofy things in an attempt to try to lure in unbelievers. Well, you'd be surprised at the fact that the Bible does not say who it's for. Now, let me just, let's first deal with this. When we say the church, do we mean the body of believers or do we mean the building that the church believers go to and have the service? Obviously, we're not necessarily just talking specifically about the building, but when we say we have church or we're going to church, we're not talking about going and hanging out with a bunch of other Christians. We're talking about meeting up at a specific location where there is a pastor, there's music, uh, there's a place to sit. So we're talking about a building where the believers are at. But if we say it's for the believers, then we might have an issue. If you say it's for the believers only, then are you sure that everybody that's there is a believer? And if everybody's not there who is a believer, if everybody that's there is a believer, or is not, I'm sorry, is not a believer, then what do we do with the unbelievers there? You don't turn, you don't put them out. You don't change your tune, do you? You keep giving the word. And so I think it'd be wrong to take that stance. And if you say that the un, it's for the unbeliever, well then do you dumb down the service? Do you bring the word of God down for them to understand? Well, let me just say this first of all. We think sometimes that when we dumb down the word or we bring it down, we, we shouldn't bring it down for the unbeliever and make them feel comfortable. Truth be told, there are a lot of believers who need you to bring it down a little bit as well. That's just what it is because there are just as many believers who need to learn and grow in the scriptures as some of the unbelievers. As a matter of fact, sometimes we find that the unbelievers might know the scriptures better than some of the believers. What is the body for? The body, the church, the gathering, the gathering or the assembly, uh, Paul, the writer of Hebrews says, do not neglect the assembling together. This word for, for a church, ecclesia means congregation, assembly, a gathering. And so do not, do not neglect or forsake the gathering. Who is the gathering for? Well, the gathering is for everybody. We don't find a scripture that says it's just for the believer. We don't find a scripture that says it's, it's for the believer and unbeliever. It is the gathering. Now, the body, the actual body, obviously, that's only made up of actual Christians. You have to be an actual believer. And I don't mean the person who says they're a Christian because there are people who call themselves a Christian and aren't. There are people who call themselves believers who we take in and treat as believers, but God knows better. God knows that they actually are not believers. Are you with me? And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to get as many people as possible to hear the word of God. What we don't want to do is we don't want to dumb down the word of God. As a matter of fact, when we look at the pattern of the of the believers in Acts, we see this in Acts 2.37. It says, and now when they heard this, they were, they were pierced to the heart. And Peter said to them and the rest of the apostles. So he's speaking to believe, he's speaking to a lot of non-believers at this point. He, and he goes on and tells them the actual gospel, repent each one of you and be baptized. If we drop down, I believe it's to verse 47. They were all together, eating their meals together in this sincerity of heart, all on one accord, praising God and having favor with all the people, having favor with not the believers, but also the non-believers, the regular people. And what was happening? The Lord was adding to their numbers daily those who were being saved. So it wasn't just the saved people in Acts who were coming together. It was the saved as well as the unsaved. But what they did not do that we tend to do nowadays is they did not water down the word. They did not diminish the importance of one speaking about their sin and their need for a savior. And then obviously two, highlighting the savior. That's important because today people do not like to highlight the savior. They instead want to highlight themselves. We'll talk about that in just a little bit, but there also must need be the preaching that mankind in his own state is on his way to hell. That's the bad news. As a matter of fact, that's just the news. That's just how it is. But the good news comes where we say that 
there is a remedy for that. And we also notice that there needs to be some sort of decorum and some sort of protocol because here we have Paul speaking about, now he's not speaking about unbelievers or the church service specifically. Actually, I take it back. He actually is. He actually is speaking about the entire church service. But notice what he says. In chapter chapter 14 of 1 Corinthians, you know, yeah, let, let's start in verse 23. He says, therefore, if the whole church, that is this body, this gathering, the assembly, if they come together and all speak in languages, now we're not talking about tongues today, but if they come in, they're speaking in tongues or languages, and an ungifted or an unbeliever enters, meaning guess what? An unbeliever will come in. They're not shocked at this. This is just what's going to happen, that they will come in. Will they not say that you are mad? And so he gives a kind of an order of how things ought to be in terms of everybody wants to have a, have, have a song. Someone has a word. Someone has a revelation. Someone always, you, all, you guys always have something special to say. Why can't the word be special? So what does Paul say? Let everything be done decently and in order. All the arguing, all of this, all of that or whatever. Uh, some of you ladies, hey, be quiet. You people here who have all these different gifts to show, sit down. Let everything done decently and in order. And so in an orderly church, there will be unbelievers that will show up as well. So the fact of the matter is the church, whether you want to say it's the building or even even if it's the gathering of the believers, the gathering of the believers is also for the unbeliever to show up. How in the world are they going to hear it? Because let's be honest, guys, in our churches, how many people in the church are going to get up, especially collectively, and go out and share the gospel? The greatest opportunity that many cases that people have to hear the gospel is when they come to hear it at the church, at the church meeting, when the gathering's together and we're bringing and breaking the word, which is why at that moment you need to make sure the word is being preached. 